call it talking points. Sometimes someone's talking about a book and you don't know what to talk about. Even if you haven't read the book, if you have the talking points, you'll be fine. A topic that invites discussion or argument. So that's exactly what we're doing, right? And you're going to have shit to talk about, too. I mean, you're full of shit, so. This week's talking points is going to be about the unlikely pilgrimage of Harold Fry, uh, which is a novel by Rachel Joyce. And um, is this a? I see it's a U, UK National Book Award. Yeah, is so this, she is she's from uh, England. Or? She's from England, and she won some awards for this. Um, that was the New Writer of the Year award. And just let me show you something because I know the listeners aren't going to be able to hear this. But if you look at that that cover on Google, when you type it in Google, mm-hmm. a cover comes up. It's got these green hills and. You know, this fun little text that falls into the hills. Um, it's like trees. It it's like, like trees. trees yeah, well. something. Yeah. But, but that's a nice cover, and, you know, I, I would have probably picked up that cover. You know, yes. I would have probably picked it up and looked at it. Um, but I see you have a different cover. I have a different cover, and it's got, uh, it's got like, a beach scene, mm-hmm. and then this really, like, kind of elegant um, text. And the text is purple and this really light blue color. It's a very feminine color. It look, it's a very feminine book, I would say. Okay, but it looks, it looks like a self-help book. It looks like a self-help book. Yes, mm. it does. I would look at it because sometimes you want to read self-help books. And think it was a self-help book. And I would think about it, it is. Yeah. So the story behind this is that my wife Emily and I, we go to Barnes & Noble, and I pick three books that... I'm interested in, I look at the covers, I basically judge them by their covers. I pick up three books I, I think I would like, I read the backs and make sure that um, I would like them, and then Emily does the same thing. Emily goes and finds three books based on covers she thinks she would like. You know, she likes that nonfiction kind of stuff. She likes, you know, th- this looks like it was written for a female. Yes. It's... It was intentionally made for that audience. So she picked this up, one up and a couple others, and then she brought them to me. And I, I would have never picked this up, but you know, I, I read the back of it. It says, meet Harold Fry, recently retired. He lives in a small English village with his wife, Maureen, who seems irritated by almost everything he does. Uh, then one morning, a letter arrives addressed to Harold in a shaky scrawl from a woman he hasn't heard from in 20 years. Um, Queenie Hennessy is in hospice and is writing to say goodbye. But before Harold mails off a quick reply, a chance encounter convinces him that, that he absolutely must deliver his message to Queenie in person. So I'm reading that, and I'm like, wow, that sounds pretty good. This guy, you know, he's an old guy. He's retired. Mm-hmm. He gets a letter from a, a love from a long time ago, mm-hmm. and this inspires him to go walk and visit her, walk across the country and visit her. And it reminded me, the reason she said she, she picked this up and gave it to me is because it's a travel story. She said it reminded me of the novel you wrote, The Crossing. You might like this. And I said, oh, sure, I'll give it a try. You know, this was the book I ultimately chose. I like travel stories. You know, the cover wasn't convincing for me. It might be convincing for someone else, but I picked it up, and then I read through it, and I'm telling you, it's a great book. Does it remind you of your book? Yes and no. I mean, there's, sim- there's similarities. Um, it's a travel story, so... Harold's meeting a lot of interesting people along the way. He's finding himself. He's finding things out about himself that he didn't know before. Um, he's reconnecting with not only himself, but also his relationship with his wife. Even though she's not there, he's thinking about it. Um, okay, in this note, what the, did his wife stay at home? She didn't want she to did. go? Or? Well, she didn't know. He just up and left. Oh, okay. She didn't even know he was going. Did she know about uh, the letter? Um... When the letter came. Yeah, she knew about the letter. Okay. So the story behind that, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, Harold used to work with Queenie. Mm-hmm. And the wife was a little, she didn't know what was going on between them. And I won't say any more than that. Okay. Because you find out a lot more about the relationship, and it's not what you think. Okay. So. So you would definitely suggest this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think... One of the things that is interesting about this book is there's a couple of things. It talks about religion a little bit. That's part of it. Like Catholic or? 
Yeah, like Christianity, but also just like general religion. Um, spirituality, you might call it. Um, I wish I could find the quote right now, but I didn't make too many markings in this one. I've read it on a plane, so it's kind of hard. Um, but he, the catalyst of him leaving is he meets this girl in, um, in a diner, and she says something like about, you know, living your life or, you know, uh, your calling or something like that. And he feels like his calling is truly because he gets this letter from this woman, Queenie, who's in the hospice. She's dying. And he gets it in his head that he's going to save her life by walking to her. Okay. And he's writing her letters and, and going to, along his way, he's going to a post office and he's, he's dropping the letters in and sending them off to, to Queenie. And, you know, he, a few times he calls the hospice to make sure she's still alive, and they say she is. Um, so, so it's really interesting how he gets that in his head, and it's like the spiritual journey. It's like a pilgrimage. I mean, it's called the unlikely pilgrimage. But it's like a spiritual journey for him that I'm keeping this woman alive by walking. Is it showing only from his perspective, or it's also showing from her perspective? Not from Queenie's, but from his wife's perspective. It goes back to his wife, and um, there's a little relationship between her and the neighbor whose wife, whose own wife, has passed away. Mm -hmm. um, but would you think that Queenie's perspective would be interesting in as well? No. Okay. You don't. Miss. There's a reason why. Okay. Yeah, and you find that out. I mean, she's in a hospice, but you're thinking like Harold thought at the beginning that. You know, she, even though she's in hospice, she's she's, she's fine. okay. Yeah. She's okay. Okay, I guess she's not okay. Right. But that's you know, when you hear from an old friend, you get a letter from an old friend, you think, uh, well, he's fine. He's fine. I guess if he all wrote is good. The, even though he's yeah. he's writing me saying he's dying, he's, he's still, good. He can write. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. It seems interesting. It seems interesting that he's stopping, and I didn't read that. Yeah. That he's stopping and actually sending the, the letters out and all this, right. which is, I don't think it's, it doesn't give, like, in your book, that doesn't happen. No. And first of all, because in your book, the guy doesn't know what the hell, where he should send it or something. Right. right? But in this, I guess he knows because he got the letter from Because he got the letter yeah. from the place, yeah. Which is a nice extra touch to it. Right. You know. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a more purpose- because I'm comparing it with your book because I'm reading it right now. Right. And I'm comparing it because you said it's a similar thing. It's a journey. And your book, we don't know. He doesn't know what to expect. There's he a mystery there. Yes. But Harold, case, Harold knows what, it, what he's exactly. going after. Yes. He has the, like, he knows she's there, I'm getting there. Right. Well, in your book, the, the crossing, he goes there, but he doesn't know where. He's, he's looking for something that he doesn't even know... If it exists or If whatever. it exists or yeah, not. Yeah. 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 And so, he, so he's searching a little more. Yeah. Yeah. Which is cool. You yeah. know, I like it, I guess, both ways, even though I didn't read that book yet. Right. Uh, but it's still, it's interesting that it's always searching for something, right? That's, I mean, that's every travel story. You're, you're yeah. always looking for something outside oh, of yeah. yourself. You're, you're leaving for a reason and you, you think you're going to find better things. But every travel story ends up with people finding themselves. Remember that Nick Hornby book? Yeah. About um, Juliet, uh, what is it? Juliet Naked. Juliet Naked. Yeah. Similar thing. You know. Exactly. Yeah. She was, was it, I, didn't, I don't remember that much, but I think she was running after the guy that was releasing music or whatever, right? Is, is, well, in that, in that it, was, it was a little interesting because... Um, she started writing to the to the musician because her her husband or her boyfriend or was something was like with obsessed. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With it. Okay, no, I remember. Crow and she wrote, yeah, 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 Daniel Crow or some, yeah, yeah. something. And she wrote to him basically saying, "Screw you, screw you." Yeah, yeah, you're ruining my my life. So, but it's but she's she's running away from her own life from her boyfriend. That I have but a relationship. she's still doing some kind of journey. She Even is. though it's not physical journey, she's not moving nowhere. Well, every she's story, still, yeah, every story is a journey, right? Yeah. Otherwise, it's a painting because she stands still. Yeah. <laughs> Just like my life. 
<laughs> the Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce. Cool. And if we look at here at Google, you mentioned Barnes & Noble, it has 4.2 out of 5. Yeah. And then a Goodreads got 3.9 out, out of five. 5, which is, a, I think, a great review, right? It's great reviews, yeah. And it's published I, I'd 2012. It's, it's not an old book. It's kind of new. Yeah. Goodreads choice of what? She's got a strong voice. Yeah. She's a great writer. Okay.